Um, hi, uh, everyone. That um, it's been a long time since uh, I did this um, online lecturing with about like a potentially 140, 180 students in Zoom. Let's see whether the performance, everything is is good. Okay. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to talk about two things today. Um, they're actually related. Uh, one of the thing I like to talk about is uh, homework assignment number four, which I just released this afternoon. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the um, participation credit, the mobility code, which in fact um, is actually related to a part of the homework assignment number four. So I'm going to first talk about homework assignment number four, and then we will um, um, go back, continue what we what we did. Um, on Monday. <clears throat> okay, let me actually bring it up. So, okay, um, partially of this homework assignment, um, uh, you should be already quite familiar with that. This this text is exactly from uh, the, the uh, homework assignment number three. So we're talking exactly about the same scenario. And in the first part of the homework, which is, um, I, I said 3%, so that means 60% of homework four is related to, for you to find another team, find another team, try to find another team starting today, okay? And then if there is anybody who cannot find the team, uh, by Friday, I will try to uh, uh, kind of matching you. And so um, every team will have a partner team. Uh, in the worst case, we might have a one particular team that they are three teams if we got the odd number there. Okay. So essentially what you need to do is for the, the 3% that you're going to write the report. I want to emphasize, I want this report to be good quality and not quantity. So I'm actually restrict that this report must be less than two pages. Okay, I want to make sure if, if you have an excellent report with only one page, that will be fine. That means it's good that you actually be able to very nicely to put this three thing in one page, that's fine. If you want to put the uh, graph and figure, that's fine too. That's actually help you to illustrate your point. So about that particular part, you're going to do the following three things that include a totally less than two pages, okay? So the uh, by the way, I should say that you can use uh, whatever uh, word processor you like. You want to submit the Microsoft Word file or PowerPoint file or PDF file or just ASCII text file. I mean, it's fine, okay? It's, it's your choice. Uh, you, you are flexible to use this reasonable format to, to turn in your work, okay? So um, the first thing is that you're going to connect with the other team and you're going to exchange all your submission for homework three, okay? You're going to show then your, your basically the whole tar file that, that you can exchange from each other. Of course, I assume it's runnable, so you can actually try to run it. Uh, the other things work. So the first thing I want you to uh, to spell out in the report is what do you think is the difference between this two design or even two implementation? So I want to emphasize you have a lot of freedom to define what is the difference. I just give you some example. This might not be exclusive. For example, you can say, hey, uh, what's the detail about how you actually int introduce uh, different uh, attribute or class design or even different classes. And maybe you realize that because we have already start talking about object or in the paradigm. So when I talk about object in paradigm, I talk about abstraction. That means you define a class. We talk about encapsulation. That means you actually want to have, make sure you have member function. So people cannot actually go into the internal directly. That's encapsulation. You provide the interface. And then we just start to talk about both inheritance and polymorphism. By the way, today I'm, I'm going to illustrate 
better about what is polymorphism. It, it, it is polymorphism essentially the, the C++ way of implementing polymorphism is via virtual function. That's why I'm actually spend a lot of time talking about virtual function. So you can, you can define any way you want to actually illustrate the difference between two different implementations. So that's your pick. And I want you to try to contrast your own implementation with the other the best you can. Okay, so that that's that's the first requirement. Uh, sorry, the first of the three items. And then the second thing I want I want you to do is that based on the differences that you uncover for the first uh, bullet, try to actually make a comparison based on your analysis, and you you try to make a, a objective. Uh, viewpoint about this, even though you know one of them is yourself. Um, so try to see what do you think is a pro and con between the difference, okay? You also pick that. And I like you to, I don't want you to pick like a laundry list. For example, two, uh, um, two object-oriented implementation. They have a, like a 2000 different places that you can actually think of, but don't, don't do too much. Pick about at most, I, I would say at most two differences there, but the most critical difference, you, you, you see that such that you can actually compare saying that which one you think is a better choice in terms of design and implementation. Okay, so that is the first one and two that you actually work on this after you receive your partner, partner means the other team, okay? You and your, you already have a two person on your team. So it's looking at somebody else and try to answer number one and number two. So after one and two, I want you to make an appointment with the other team. So essentially most cases is a four student, you will arrange a meeting. I mean, this part due to the recent um, um, situation in Davis, um, uh, number one is safety, okay? If you're gonna meet, you have to make sure your meeting uh, arrangement is completely safe. Like you can use a Zoom or you can actually meet in the dormitory during the day, assuming it's very convenient for everybody to gather there, okay? If it's by default, you can use Zoom. And, and for that meeting, um, you're going to actually share your finding with each other means number one and number two. And then you're going to have a discussion because essentially you're saying that, oh, I want to tell you what I think about your code and difference from my code. And I think this is good. And, and the other thing might actually get want to get some illustrate, uh, sorry, elaborate answer about why is that. And then you're going to basically try to look over your, your, your number one and number two from each other. And again, I want you to actually highlight what do you think is the most important takeaway from that meeting? I mean, one of the things I, I, I actually recommend if all four of you agree, if you use Zoom, assuming, or, or you want to do any other kind of recording, I would like you to record the meeting and the content of the recording all belong to you. You're, you're not gonna submit this. You're gonna, not gonna share this on Facebook or whatever. And, and this is essentially belong to you. So you can actually, from that um, discussion, you decide, maybe you already know, maybe you have to review it. Oh, we talk about this for about uh, uh, 25, 30 minutes. By the way, I don't expect this meeting to be uh, very long. Okay, essentially before the meeting, you should actually exchange what's your answer for number one and number two. So the other team, they can actually take a look at that and then they can actually provide some response. By the way, I want you the meeting not for argument, okay? The meeting is for uh, just for sharing, exchange information, try to learn from each other and try to understand better about why one group of people think this is an important difference and the other group of people actually think the other one might be more interesting. So this is actually a great learning uh, opportunity for you to learn from each other and learn from different perspective. Okay, okay. so that's actually uh, for this three element. So when you submit this, this homework, this part, 
the point where four, I want you to have a no, I emphasize, I don't want long report. I want short, brief report. In fact, I would think that the shorter, the better, if you can catch the most important point. Okay, um, so that that is the the three percent I want you to uh, work on. Okay, any question for this? Let me actually check the chat. There are about four questions in the chat. Okay, yeah, uh, Jonathan, I'll, I'll deal with that later. Okay, uh, yes, yes, you pick two. Uh, man, uh, okay. I don't want to put any, uh, Jason, I don't want to put any, um, 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 what do I call it? Um, uh, word limit, but you, you can see that, uh, I like you try your best to use the minimum amount of information to represent the most important thing you want to represent. Um, I, by the way, that I think is an important training for a student because sometimes we actually found 200 glorified detail. And I'm very excited about all this 200. But remember, after you left UC Davis, you work for a company in Bay Area and you want to convince your boss or even sometime at the lunchtime, you met your CEO at the at, at the uh, um, employee's cafeteria, and he sit right next to you. And then he asks you, well, what's special about your project? So that capability is very important that you be able to um, find the most important one or two things. Sometimes we call it uh, elevator uh, speech, means that you only have a time when you actually arrive with someone in elevator and then try to present that. So so I do think that to for yourself, you can actually record the difference. Or for your that's why I, I like you to um uh audio or video recording your your discussion with the other team because you actually pick up a lot of idea. Um so it's still there. It's still the recording that belong to all four of you. It's not belong to anybody else. It's four of you. And um, later, if you uh, review that what what you actually have to discuss, and you actually realize you might actually miss something, and so it's all there. But the thing is that for homework assignment number four, this part, I want you to actually think about how do you pick the most important one. Okay, that is a taste issue. That is also a process that will make you to become not just a, a, a mature programmer, but a better designer. Because you can see that there is a, we're trying to balance a few goals here. One is how to train a student to, to linguistically program C++ correctly. But the other thing with object-oriented paradigm is really about the taste and the choice of the design. And that is something which is, pretty hard to learn unless you actually follow this kind of exercise. I hope that makes some sense to you about why I'm actually pushing you to do this part. Okay. Um, oh, I have a one new question. Let me take a look. <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, you're very welcome, uh, Jason. Okay. So I'm actually going to go for the second part. The, the second part, um, I already included in the GitHub link I share on the um, um, on Monday. By the way, I want to thank um, one of the students who actually sent me a, a bug report, which um, I, I really appreciate that. And, and let me actually acknowledge the student. I hope you don't mind. Uh, I say bug. Yeah, James, James Nepper, uh, he actually sent me a bug report about uh, under what cases. So I actually did uh, check the program and I just want to tell you that I, um, if you look at the, the, the GitHub right now, I actually updated this afternoon, uh, a few file. There are a few things which is really uh, amazing. Uh, let me see here. Here's a file, you can see that what, what file have changed. 
there's one file I actually changed. I mean, I, I changed message.h a uh, long time ago. I just uploaded uh, SP person, I changes, but the, I actually found a bug in ECF36bjson.cpp. And this was, there was a bug. By the way, why is JSON, uh, ECF36JSON.cpp? I have used this code for at least three different generation of student for ECF36B. And that bug never bothers me, never appear until this quarter. So I want to appreciate all of you, especially James, that's actually helped me to actually uh, detect a bug, which is not, not trivial. I thought it's okay. And, and so many students have a user and they're okay. And it didn't bother anybody. So it's still there. Okay. That's software engineering, uh, unfortunately, but it's, but it's good that when you actually realize. So, so I actually found out this, this bug, but also there is a even more, I, I will use the word bizarre bug which is related to ECF36B mobility.json. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot the name of the, the, the team. There are two uh, female students and uh, they, they actually both have exact, experienced exactly the frustration. And what's interesting about this, this file, this is by the way, the JSON RPC need to use this file to define, send and dump to JSON. They said their, their program cannot compile. So I was wondering why. And, and the thing is that I actually realized the difference is that I actually have a one extra comma after this line, line 20, I have a one extra comma. So that's why if you compare the older version and newer version, that the newer version, that particular comma has been removed. But I said, this bug is bizarre. This is, by the way, this has been the first time I have been teaching this kind of material using JSON RPC for since 2019. So you can think about every, every year I taught two class of student. So this is already used by so many classes of ECF36B. This is the first time I realized if I add a comma that for if I compile under certain MacBook or certain WSL, it works. It doesn't matter. That comma doesn't bother the, the compiler or JSON RPC step, so it's okay. But some of the WSL environment, they are actually sensitive to that extra character. And so after we remove that, that particular extra character, everything works fine. And by the way, with that, that was perfectly okay running on my uh, MacBook. Um, um, so this is, to me, you can think about sometime is quite unexpected that you have a program that work perfectly well on one environment. And when you thought that the system has been debugged almost perfect, it should naturally work in another Unix environment. It didn't, okay? So, so just, just this kind of ex experience sometime uh, 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 counts for programmer, for experienced programmer, because we actually um, cannot be. By the way, if you're a programmer, especially your C++, C programmer, don't be too naive and uh, about everything should work as you expected because there are so many updates, so many changes, and sometimes there have a box in there and such that you never know what's going on. So you have to try it, you have to run it, and then to see. I, I feel that is a exciting journey as a programmer for all of you to uh, to experience after you, you you already started by the way and then later uh, you will you will be uh, enjoy such a um, um, okay so just want to tell you that this is the this is important this is in uh, uh, mobility that's actually not not this one sorry uh, this. Uh, this this GitHub link, which is the github.com slash s Felix Wu 
slash mobility. That is the 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 content it include a lot of things, um, um, and and help for you to uh, conquer the rest of the, the the quarter. That's why I spend a lot of time want to do that. Okay, so now let's actually go back to the the second part of the homework. So the second part of the homework, I actually say, okay, you take your homework three implementation. I want to add you add one extra function. Okay, and that function is called JSON to object. So in homework three, I asked you to write a function called dump to JSON. And now I'm actually asked you to write another function called JSON to object. So, so, so let me actually now go back to first actually tell you why it's already there in the, in the uh, mobility. So this is mobility. Uh, if you look at just any class, any class, I have two lines here. You see that this line you already have, which is a virtual JSON column, column value, dump to JSON. You already have this for homework three. And now the new function you need to implement in homework four is this, this also a virtual function is a Boolean and then is called JSON to object and then JSON column, column value. Okay, I'm actually go back to the code a bit later, but I want to first show you conceptually what this two function, they go hand in hand, work together. So I'm going to share my PowerPoint slide if I still have it. <clears throat> okay, so, um, so this, is, this, is, this slide is, is conceptually very important for you to understand. So we have been talking about two different worlds up to this point, ECF 36B. There's a one world called, called C++. So you, you define a C++ class, and then you basically define the attribute, that's C++ object. But the other world we have been uh, working on is called JSON world. I mean, now you probably have a little bit of feeling about what JSON world. JSON is a, a language for us to specify information like object-oriented uh, classes, okay? It's basically allow you to be define, but the, 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 the difference between C++ and the JSON is that JSON is not a programming language, it's only the data, that's number one. Number two is, um, is for you to remember is that C++ is representing object that's actually have a static structure in some sense, static structure. But JSON is an object-oriented representation. It allow a lot of flexibility. It, it, it might neglect certain attributes. So um, some of you might heard about SQL. Uh, SQL stands for, what's SQL stands for? Anybody can help me what SQL stands for? Anybody heard about SQL? Okay, I would just write it here. C++ is typically, is a SQL world, but there is another world that you might heard about this, even in job interview, it's called non-SQL. Okay, so, so let, let me actually Google it. I'm kind of uh, embarrassed. I cannot, cannot. Uh, I, I know it's something about query language, but I forgot S is a sequential or something. Let me see my, where's my Firefox? Okay, my Firefox is here. <clears throat> so S, I just want, okay. It's a structure query language. Okay, structure, S is a, is, is a structure. Okay, great, that, that, that expect. But why is structure? If you think about a class, is a structure. I mean, in C, we call it a struct. That's why it's a structure because it's basically SQL is performed against the data that has a structure. So C++ object is definitely a structure, the structure including inheritance because it have different field, different column which represent each of the attribute, and you can actually just query. If, if you uh, will take a course in a, a database, you definitely will learn what is SQL. On the other hand, 
is called non-SQL. You can think about is no structure. Okay, oh, no SQL. No SQL is a approach database design uh, outside the traditional structure found in relation. What, what do I mean by you don't have a structure? Meaning that I don't know how many column I have. I don't know how many attribute I have. I don't know whether you this particular object has this uh, uh, social security number. I don't know whether this this particular record has a a, a uh, has a video link or has a, a personal web page. So that is called a no SQL or non SQL. Essentially, is is a is a concept that you you try to operate on an object, but you don't know exactly what's available. And you can think about in real world uh, data processing, which way do you think is more popular? Of course, it's non-SQL because non-SQL is realistic because when we record the data, we might not have everything. We just have everything that we can. And so if, if SQL versus non-SQL, I hope you will know better about exactly the difference, but right now I want you to at least had the 20,000 feet uh, um, elevation that you actually know what it is. Okay, so now I want to come back to, to this, this thing. So essentially in industry, when they talk about non-SQL, they really talk about JSON. Why is that? Because JSON, what they have is a key value pair. And I don't actually guarantee that you have that key. You might have the key I had never seen, and you might not have the key I really want. But then when I do non-SQL processing of JSON data, that my application, whatever the driver, need to actually take that into uh, account to be able to handle that. So, so the capability in industry, especially the data intensive uh, application to handle JSON is very important because JSON is really the most common way of representing the real world information. Okay, all right. So give you that concept that we're talking about two different world. One is called C plus world. Now you learn today is actually a more structural world while JSON is a non-structural world. Okay, so the thing is that in homework three, what I want you to do is the, the, the function below is called dump to JSON. Essentially, we convert a C++ object into a JSON representation. Okay, so that is one way to do that. And you probably already seen that um, um, how it's done. Okay, but this particular one, we're gonna do the other direction, which is from a JSON, we actually convert the back to C++. So you can see that this function is JSON to object. It take one parameter, which is a JSON value. And then that JSON value is going to be changing the object who hosts this member function to convert that JSON value into the, the, the each of the attribute that's actually going to fill in the, the, the value. So in some sense, if you have done, okay, okay, let me actually tell you this is uh, as an example. Assuming you write a program that's actually uh, create an object. At the moment the program finish, you either exit or control C that this object is gone, basically. It no longer exists on your computer. However, what you can do is that you can actually call dump to JSON to actually create this object become a JSON value. And then you print that JSON value object to a file. So you print the JSON to a file, like what I did uh, for the um, uh, mobility part. So next time when you rerun the program, guess what you will need to do is you actually read the file and read it in as a JSON. And then you call this function JSON to object. And essentially your object revive 
and become a, a life object, even though your program died. That's why uh, when I when I did the server on Monday, I actually my my server crashed. That's why. I mean, you uh, some of you asked me, "Well, your your server crashed?" I said, "No problem." Because why? I actually store all the objects in the JSON format in file. So if my file, if if my program crashed. I can always bring it back, no problem. I can just continuously operate. That that's what that's what industry uh, strain uh, level server is it has to deal with this kind of persistency uh, to deal with all kind of uh, um, unexpected uh, glitches in power or in bugs or in crashes. Okay, so this is the function I'm not going to ask you to to implement called JSON to object for every single class in the home your uh, from your homework assignment number three in homework assignment number four so before i move further i want to show you how it is done in programming this file has been already given to you in the mobility so so let me actually give you a, a example so now let's go back to mobility <clears throat> okay let's actually take a look the the simplest one um i think the simplest one is SP person. Let me see. Do I have that? Yeah, SP person. Um, it has it has a, a JSON value, and uh, sorry, it has dump to JSON, and it also have JSON to object, right? You know what? I changed my mind. I'm not going to do uh, this. I'm going to do, do a different one. <clears throat> It turned out that one is actually quite complicated. I want to say, what do I have a GPS? Let me see. Yeah, I do have GPS. Okay, GPS is always easier one. I want to tell you why. Okay, so you can see that GPS, I have uh, thumb to JSON as you already have. Uh, and then I have uh, JSON to object. Okay, so every single class I have these two functions. So let's take a look at what uh, gps.cpp <clears throat> okay that's actually skip this part okay this part is dump to json you already know that's from the it's essentially just how do you convert your c plus object into the json format but actually i'm going to show you the next one the next one is called, uh, sorry, let me actually go back here. Okay, good. So this is part of the code called JSON to object. Uh, by the way, this code is already provided to you. So if you implement GPS, uh, you can just copy this code. To copy my code is whatever I release in the reference implementation is perfectly legal, okay, for this class. So. Essentially, you're input a JSON value, and eventually you can see what I did here. By the way, this is this is the function. That's it. Okay, let me let me just open it. <clears throat> so this part is uh, this part. This two line is the most important thing. You see what I did? I basically say what is a uh, this latitude because GPS underscore dd has only two attributes i need to convert it back right one is a latitude and longitude and what what you see that how i convert it is the latitude is equal to argjv what is argjv is the input json that's the json you can think about that json is what you produced using dump to json okay so dump to json is generating this one now you're going to revert the back. So this is the JSON. So over there, so, so essentially, if you understand how dump to JSON work, this will help you to actually see how do you do the revert process. But there is a few extra thing you need to be careful. Um, so over here, I just say argjv and then say, because the key value pair, so I basically say the key is a latitude. And then I said dot as double. So by the way, that is a JSON value uh, object. Uh, always come over here. This is my favorite page. Uh, hold on one second. My favorite page is JSON, JSON value CPP. 
Okay, if you go to this page, jsonvalue.cpp, let me share this with all of you in the chat. <clears throat> okay, so if you if you take a look, this is essentially the .h file for JSON value uh, .h, and you can you can look at here. It has a bunch of function, public member function, and one of them is s double. So they have you see that they have an s c string, s string, s integer, s unsigned integer. You can think about all the hassle from the programming language C, they essentially provide a S function. So they have two set of function is very commonly used for JSON programming. One is called S, means that you're going to interpret that JSON value part as the double type or as the floating point or the string type. And the other one is always a Boolean function. Is, is this JSON, JSON null, is JSON bool, is JSON integer, or is this JSON double? Okay, and things like that. You have a bunch of function that you can actually use. It's very beautiful. So essentially, this is the two line that's most important. So how do I convert it back? This is, a, uh, sorry, let me actually kill this one first. Oh, sorry, I saw a question. Uh, one second. Okay. Uh, um, Tiren, uh, he ran, uh, sorry, win. I probably should call you win. Okay, win. Uh, let me tell you that why uh, um, uh, it's a bull because sometimes it will fail. So essentially what you did is that uh, you try to convert the JSON back to uh, C++, but somehow there is some error that cannot complete the conversion. I will show you some example about why uh, is is that it's a good question, by the way. That why is a return a bull? Because uh, sometimes it's okay, but sometimes the conversion. I mean, usually convert from C plus plus to JSON is no problem, but convert it back from JSON to C plus plus. Sometimes we'll, you will have some error. I must report. I must report. Yeah. Yeah. Be, be, be. Oh, somebody. Oh, some uh, can you mute or somebody? I think somebody need to. You yourself. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> okay, so um, I, I will get to that more specifically when. Okay, a bit later. So um, so you can see that this is a C plus plus attribute is this to the latitude, and then this is the JSON. I actually extract the key using the key latitude out of that JSON, and then I use this member function of JSON column column value called S double. So essentially I convert, represent that value into a C++ double value and then assign that double value into this latitude. So this line essentially extract that JSON value, that portion of JSON value into the latitude. And similarly, this one, I'm extracting the longitude into that. Okay. So so that is just the, the final part. But you see that I actually do a lot of check before I actually did this two line. Why? As I said, what's the main difference between JSON and C++? C++ is essentially structured. JSON is unstructured. That means the compiler didn't check whether that object is a valid object. So, so structure, unstructured, the other way to interpret is that whether the compiler has already checked, this is the correct format. And in JSON, because you actually read it in from a file, you don't know who actually produced that. And, and therefore there is no guarantee about the format of the data, whether it's the JSON, maybe there is a, a syntax error, even in the JSON sense. And maybe there was a critical, uh, critical uh, message. I'm sorry, critical key value pair is missing. And then, I mean, sometimes you're missing some key value pair might be okay, but sometimes if you miss the, the critical one, and I, I don't want that. For example, over here, my minimal requirement for a GPS JSON is that it must have a latitude and longitude. So you can let me let me actually yeah. go over this few line before I did this two line. Let me tell you what I did. 
the first things I check is that whether this JSON, this, this JSON you actually imported, ARG underscore JV, is actually a new JSON. Because sometimes people just not very careful. They actually, uh, the file is all empty. So when you actually try to read a, read a file JSON in, it's empty. That's why it's a new. So you, you first need to check if this JV dot is new or is true. That means it's new. And also is object. This is another one. Okay, I want to go back to this. You can see that how many things you can check. What I did is, is new is over here. You see that? Is new is one of the function. And the other one is, is object because I'm expecting that this is an object JSON. So, so typically you have to know what, what you will read it in. And sometimes it's an array. So there is another one called is an array. So you can actually do this kind of check for every single JSON value that you have. By the way, the page I show you uh, will be- Yeah, the oh, Oscar, you, you say something? Wait, the other- Oh my God. Yeah, that's okay, that's okay, yeah. Okay, so um, um, so essentially, I'm going to check whether the is new or is true. Um, is object is not true. So I'm because I'm expecting a, a JSON object, but if this is another object, for example, array is not an object, or is is a basic type like a string or is a number that is not an object. An object basically say the first character is a curly bracket and the last character is a curly bracket, and that is actually a object from the JSON's perspective. So, so the thing is that I'm expecting that this must be, this two condition, if either one of this condition is true, then I know I have no way to convert because it's not even the format is not right. So I meet it the return false. So when you ask why the JSON to object is returned a bool, that's the case because I want to tell whoever called this function, whether that conversion is actually successful. If it's not successful, I'm going to not going to introduce a, a, a kind of like corrupt version of the object. I want to make sure that the, the object I'm converting from, because let me emphasize, JSON is non-structured. And therefore it's my code, when I did the conversion to a structure to check whether the structure I demand in the C++ world, is actually there. And that, that is actually very important. Okay. When you want to say something? Um, does that mean that when you implement this into like actual code, you would also have to do like a like a try catch statement if like it returns <clears throat> false in the code? Right, right. You can you you definitely usually when I call it, I actually use a try clause, try to catch it for exception. We'll we'll, we'll talk see. about exception handling later. Yeah. Yeah, you okay, try to you. catch it or you, you can do a, um, you can throw, by the way, you can throw based on error code or you can just check the error code. Okay, check whether the the, the RC, the return code is, is true or false. Okay, all right, good question. Okay, thank you. So let's actually check the next part. The next part is actually checking because I'm expect minimally, the JSON must have a latitude and longitude for the GPS. And therefore, what I what I did is I check, you, you see that the first thing I check if, if ARG underscore JV latitude is null, whether that particular attribute is null or not. This means that you do have or you do not have this latitude as a key value pairs key. So if it's a null, it's true. And or longitude is true and it's not double because I'm expecting this key, the value is a floating point or it's a double. That's why I'm actually checking whether it's double. Um, and then if if it's if it's if if it's not normal, but it's, it's actually also not double, I also return false because I fail because I, I expect um, that I need to have those and it's double and you don't have that. So I actually, um, um, this I have to return a false to say that whoever call uh, JSON to object, they, they actually didn't provide me the, the correct format for the, for the GPS object. Okay, 
All right. So um, so just let you know that because JSON is non-structured, so essentially when we write the code, the compiler didn't help us. At runtime, we have to do all this check. Um, and unless you have other way to actually check uh, when in the larger amount of data, of course, you cannot check every time. So you have to do some kind of batch checking. But the concept is that when you actually convert the JSON back to C++, it's not guaranteed because it's non-structured. Okay, so this hopefully gives you some idea about the object, uh, JSON to uh, object. Okay. Any question before I move to a more complicated example? Let me see the chat. <clears throat> okay, I think you are helping each other. That's great. That That's great. You're helping each other. Uh, okay. Um, oh, I will tell you how to do that. Okay, I will I will first answer both questions. The both question is how do we actually read JSON value from the file and pass it to the function? So okay. I want to tell you that I actually already provide a bunch of utility function under ECF36B JSON.cpp. Okay, and and I give you this because I actually did JSON programming with C for so long. So I know I actually eventually get to this few functions. It's really helped me to deal with JSON file and C++ together. And so I'm actually giving you not just this function, but also give you the implementations. You can learn how I actually do that. So for example, if you look, this is the file is already given to you. Um, one of the function I call this all the time is called my file to JSON my file to JSON. So my file to JSON is a function I already implement. It actually called two other function in the same file. One is called my file to string and the other one is called my parse JSON. Okay, so my file to string is not surprising. It's just standard file IO to include a file and read the read a character and, and into, into a string essentially. But my parse JSON, you can take a look at file. I don't have time to go over that right now, but it's actually talk about how you write JSON programming to convert a string from a string to a JSON value object. So, so let me actually tell you that what this is. So my file to JSON is that um, you provide two parameter. One parameter is a file name. What is a file name that you, you like to retrieve? And the other one is the JSON value pointer. This is essentially a call by reference. Uh, so you essentially allocate space for JSON value. You pass the pointer into that. And essentially inside the function, I actually start to uh, grab the content from the file and then put that into this JSON value object. Okay, that's basically, you can see that when I call my parse JSON is, JSON is I actually put the string JVPTR, which is ooh, J, JVPTR is is the uh, JSON, and then have a JSON string. What is JSON string? I JSON string got it from my file to string. So essentially, I basically convert the string of JSON into the JSON value object. So that's the function um, you can you can actually pick it up and learn. Okay, uh, I'd be happy to go over the detail, but this is the High level, okay. And some of these say why NUA, okay? Because, uh, for example, over here, why is NUA? Because sometimes if the file name doesn't exist, by the way, just to let you know, this line I actually just added uh, because I forgot this line, and and it's causing core dump, okay? So um, so after I add this line, it seems to be okay. All right, all right. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm actually going to spend, I mean, if you need to leave, just leave. I want to just introduce another JSON to object, and then I will share the recording right after class, okay? Um, so I want to go to SP person. So remember I said SP person is actually quite uh, not so easy. I will show you why. <clears throat> So SP person, 
underscore h is uh, has this function. But also, if you remember what we did on Monday, sp person inheriting from commutable. Okay, by the way, inheritance and virtual function is sometimes make things unnecessarily complicated. Okay, but I'm going to show you why for uh, a function like a JSON to object. So now let's actually take a look at sp person dot cpp. Okay, let's look for JSON to object. Okay, over here. Okay, I have this part here. This is sp object. Everything is here. <clears throat> okay, so um, okay, this part is actually not that hard, not that bad. So the, the same thing is I checked the, whether the JSON value is a new or is an object. That's the same thing as as what we have right before. And and then I actually one thing I did here is different, is that you actually never when I do person, I never have an attribute called class name. But what's what's actually happened in the commutable dot h? I actually add a new attribute called class name. Whether I, I said this is a hack, okay? I have to have this in order to have a polymorphism and, and JSON to object work together. Okay, so a class name represent what is the class that was created um, for this particular object. And you will think, oh, why class name isn't commutable is not. Because if you create a SP person or you create a Ting object, because both of them inheriting from commutable. So their class name for the virtual function perspective, their class name has to be Ting or SP person. So that is the trick I, I play in this design such that I actually know the metadata. Because the thing is that when I convert in C++ world, I actually know perfectly that it is a SP person object or it's, it's a Ting object. In C++ world, I have the, the tool called virtual function for me to do that. But when I convert it to JSON, I actually lost that. I actually lost that. Um, and, and the thing is that I have to encode it that somehow. So when I actually bring it back, I know that I'm bring back the right thing. Okay, I, I will, I, will I, I think I need to elaborate more on Friday, but I want to just show you this piece of code. So what I did here is that I actually use I check whether the class name is null. So I require you have the class name and the class name is string. And then I want to say that the class name must be equivalent to the class name I just created. Okay, so think about who is this. This is a person object. But over here, if this class name happened to be Ting instead of to be SP person, then this one will, will have an inconsistency because essentially you're giving me a JSON object that was converted from a Ting object. And now you want me to put that into a SP person object. And of course it will fail because that's not the purpose. The structure, everything is not right. So that's why this part, I have to do this check. Okay. So um, I'm going to finish in one minute, then I will uh, wait until fri uh, Friday to actually go over the, the rest. <clears throat> so let's actually took a message dot CPP. So this one is really interesting. I hope you understand this part. And message dot CPP also has JSON to object. And if you remember, message.h. If you look at message.h, what is message.h? I have a two communable. I have a communable from and communable to. May I ask you, 
do I know this communable is a SP person or is a team? Because remember, I want to be able to communicate between a team to a team, a person to a person, a person to a team, and a team to a person. And therefore I have all the cases and communable is a parent class in a potentially complicated inheritance hierarchy. And essentially when you actually convert it to the JSON, even including the virtual function, by the way, when I convert it, when I call from that dump to JSON, it's going to actually call the, the, the specific one, not the communable, but it's going to call either ting or SP person. So it's going to call that. But the thing is that after I convert it back, I actually need to know what, what it was uh, in terms of the type, because I lost that when I did this. This is probably called loss in the translation. Okay, let me actually show you why. Oh, not here. Okay. Okay, let's actually take a look at this. I actually check whether it's a normal is object, just like what I showed you before. But you, you see that I actually check whether you have a from and whether from you have a class name and you have a two and you have a two also have a class name and then you have a content from and two and content, all the things. Okay, you want to have that. But now you actually see, I actually separate these two cases. This is the, um, a little bit uh, difficult to read, but I try my best, okay? So you look at this, I said, um, if the input JSON from and the class name as string is equal to team, and this to the from dot class name is also equal to team. If you actually have this two, that means you're matching the, the type of the from, from the JSON world to the C++ world by using this hack called class name. And, and the thing is that now I know this is a ting object. Now I'm actually creating a ting object. And then you can see that I actually casting this to the front over the ting and then put the content. So essentially what I did, let me actually uh, make it really quick. So if I realize that indeed the, the class is actually a ting uh, from the JSON world, so I'm actually going to create a ting object, and then I'm actually going to put that into the um, into the, the the JSON, but interpret that as a ting object. So that's why I I I have a ting object, and then I say, uh, by the way, I use pointer syntax. LV underscore T under PTR is what is a pointer to a ting object, and then I say JSON to object the input string from, because I know the from is a ting object. So I actually convert the JSON ting object to the C++ ting object. Otherwise, if it's uh, class name is equal to SP person, then essentially I'm doing similar, but this time I'm actually creating a SP person object. And, and then I basically calling the SP object version of JSON to object to actually let it go that way, okay? And I have to do the same thing for two as well. The two also have a two cases. It's either a ting or SP person to do that, okay? So this is a, a bit ugly, but a bit understandable because we try to convert the, the C++, which, which is a structural world of information into the non-structured world, which is the like a JSON, okay? So it's a bit hassle if we want to do this kind of conversion, okay? So, okay, I'm going to stop here and uh, sorry, I run a little bit late. Oh, sorry, a little bit late, yeah, uh, beyond six o'clock. I hope everybody is safe. Uh, I will, I, I think um, by default on Friday, we're going to still do online, okay? Just let you know, we're going to still doing online because uh, three steppings within five days. Uh, we have to be careful. Okay. Oh, let me check if there is any last minute question here. Hold on. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Where's my...
question. Yeah, Friday, I think Friday, let's do online, okay? Oh, participation server is not up yet, but I will I will let it up and announcing the announcement, okay? Okay, I think that that's good. Stay safe. I will see you on Friday via Zoom, okay? The same link, all right? Bye, thank you.